I'm Shan and this is for story time it's just me today and I thought I'd talk about some books I'm currently reading and some recent reads kind of including the reading rush in case you're not a vlog person you didn't watch the vlogs um so lots of books to get through first one that I wanted to mention that I've just started reading is Notes of a Crocodile by Chu Mao Jin and this is translated by Bonnie Hugh and um this is the choice for Bert's uh, My Silk of Book Club which is um books uh, written in the 90s so this one written when is this one this is this edition is actually 2017 or this translated translation but I think this was written in 94 yeah I think so I can't see now but it was uh, early 90s um, I haven't got very far on this one uh, but it's about a lesbian woman living in um, late 80s Taipei and it says it's a coming of age story of queer misfits discovering love, friendship and artistic affinity. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to join in, um, just read the book really, you've got until the end of August and then we'll do a little video talking about it. If you've already read it, um, it'd be great to know what you thought and any kind of thoughts or discussion points that you have that we can kind of pick up on when we do eventually talk about it. I'm also reading Vibrate Higher Daily and this is by Lala Delia a beautiful picture of her on the back this is like a spiritual um book that is pretty much just talking about how you can um like raise your vibration <laughs> i'm just going to change cha to raise your vibration in your daily life instead of vibrate daily higher daily um so i guess it's about uh it sort of talks about eating well about looking after yourself but also about the way that you um react to things in the world i'm finding it kind of uh, just okay really at the moment um probably is going to end up being three star but there's some, there's some bits in literature I'm enjoying and I'm only about halfway through so I will report back when I do finish it but um the other one that kind of links into that one is when things fall apart by Pema Chodron and I've been re this is a reread for me and I've been reading it kind of through a lot of lockdown because I feel it is a really helpful book to um read at kind of difficult times I feel like Part of me feels that I wish it had a different title because it feels like this would be a really great gift for people going through something difficult. But then if you give them this, it implies that um, their life is falling apart. Um, but I would highly recommend it. And I think that even if you think you're not going to like sort of spiritual books, um, then I feel you would like this one. It's really well written and it's really kind of real as well. So that's that. And then the last one that I'm reading at the moment is The Whole Picture by Alice Proctor. And it's the colonial story of the art in our museums and why we need to talk about it. Um, so it's sort of saying about how we deal with colonial history of art in museums. Um, I'm really interested in the subject matter. It kind of links in with all the stuff around statues that's been happening at the moment. I do feel, though, that I'm only on page 63 and it's not been an easy read, which is kind of fine. It's just written maybe in a different style than I would I would choose. Uh, it's kind of talked slightly about the origins of museums, talking about, I guess, um, originally they would have been like private collections, really, for really rich people. And I guess that it's always going to be kind of a hangover from that. So it's, it's, it's like part museums just naturally are part of this white supremacy. <laughs> Um, and how that is tackled. She's then kind of gone on straight away to talk about individual objects or, yeah, individual objects. So she's talking about the sarcophagus, which is in the Johnson Museum in London. There was something about a diamond and kind of their stories. And I felt like I would have liked a little bit more of a kind of overarching um, structure, I guess. I, I wanted to have like about museums in general rather than going into the um, like the nitty gritty of it but yeah I'll see how it goes and I think um there's not loads of books sort of talking about this as far as I know I know that there's one um I can't remember the title but it's about um decolonizing museum um universities so those are current reads I did recently obviously we did the reading rush um so I, I thought I'd just mention the books I read during that because I didn't just in case you didn't watch it or there's a couple I didn't really talk about that much um brief uh, thing about the reading rush um, I know that there was <clears throat> the reading rush organizers made some mistakes and I you know I think they were mistakes or um, errors um, and I definitely think we should call out these these uh, mistakes yeah I think we should call them out I think we should criticize and it's right for us to criticize it's right for things to be open that we can 
challenge and I think lots of people have been doing that in really constructive ways um, but also I found that lots of people on Twitter are doing it in quite horrible ways so I just think that um, yeah let's um, question things but let's do it in a um, in a kind way as well or let's th remember that there's people actual people involved rather than just that kind of faceless um, online thing so anyway the books that I read, I will. There's this one I didn't talk about because I finished it. It was the last one I read, and that was To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I know it's kind of like loads of people have read it anyway, so I don't really need to say a great deal. But um, I'd seen the film, I enjoyed the film, and I didn't. I didn't. It was fine, this one. I gave it three stars, I think, because I read it quick enough, but I didn't. I felt that because I'd watched the film, I didn't really get anything else from reading it. It's not like it because it's, it's not like the writing is beautiful or anything you know it's all about the plot so because i've seen the film yeah i didn't didn't super enjoy it but i think a part of it as well was because it was the seventh book of the week and i was probably just fed up with reading as well so i think part of it is on me um that's love and other stories by leonora brito which is short stories which are set in cardiff bay by a um black writer in tiger bay hakame mikoshi which is um manga this was cute but i wanted it to be cuter the Haunting of uh, Blackwood House by Darcy Coates. Um, it's kind of trashy, but um, fun trashy. Uh, yeah, it was like super tropey and predictable, and that was fine. Um, I did read the group book, which is Such Fun Age by Kylie Reid. Yeah, they should have read the group book before doing the discussion. <laughs> um, and I hope that they read it now, because it is a, a really good book. I really enjoyed it. It's obviously since been um, nominated for the book, so that's, that's really interesting. I gave it four stars. I found it just like really readable, um, really kind of smart, lots of layers, lots of interesting things to say. I enjoyed, really enjoyed the character of Amira and of the little girl, Briar. Um, and the kind of, the white woman in it as well was uh, very believable. So I thought it was really well done. Um, I really loved the bit where Amira says, and, and yeah, if you've read it, you'll know. But when Maya says that sentence towards the end, I just loved that bit. So yeah, it was it was good. I really enjoyed it. Um, very much glad I've read that one. And then two that I loved. I read two five star books, which were these two. I'll start with this one. So this is the Stars and the Blackness Between Them, by um, Janorda Petrus, and this is like a young adult um, book. But I it felt so. Um, I felt so connected to it and I love that about it. So it's, um, did I say that Joanna de Petrus is a black woman? And she is basing, she's, there's two girls involved in this who, um, they're, they're queer. Yeah, I don't want to say about their relationship with each other. So there's, uh, one of them is from Trinidad and one of them is in Minneapolis. And the one from Trinidad, so it kind of is an alternate point of view. The one from Trinidad moves to Minneapolis and they become friends or maybe more. Um, it's also got lots about um, kind of uh, astrology, it's got lots of kind of references to different things I enjoyed, like lots about Prince and um, Whitney Houston. Um, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. Um, well, I loved it. Uh, there was also um, kind of links with with kind of history, with um, like civil rights movement as well. There's just so much good stuff in here. I liked, um, which one was it? I like Audrey's dad. I thought he was cute. Um, so yeah, I really, really loved it. Let me know if you've read it. I thought it was wonderful. Um, uh, also, maybe, I don't know. I really love stuff about astrology and kind of slightly magic-y. It's like a, it says it's like a black, a queer black Afrofuturist magical ancestral love oracle book. And yeah, I don't know if everyone would. Then I read American Sonnets from My Past and Future Assassin by Terence Hayes. This is a poetry book by a black American writer, uh, poet, and this was amazing. I, um, like a lot of people, I think I don't read loads of poetry, but I do enjoy it. And But sometimes I guess um, I find it a little bit more difficult to read, but this one I just kind of flew through because I was kind of, I was pretty hooked on it. I thought it was quite hypnotic as well. And... Um, just had some kind of great one lines as well. Um, like a prince taught us a real man has a beautiful woman in him. I also liked the line, probably ghosts are allergic to us. Our uproarious breathing and ruckus, our eruptions are disregard for dust. So this was great. 
super recommend that one as well. And then there's some books I've kind of read a little bit before, reading Rush and a little bit afterwards. Um, I read Secret Yoga Club, Self-Empowerment Through the Magic of Yoga by Gabriel Hales. This is kind of a little bit of a um, kind of glossy little book, so it's a bit more of a flicking through. But it, it had lots of stuff. Um, it's got about mudras there. Well, it has about poses, it has a lot about the kind of um, other aspects of yoga as well. So it's about pranayama, um, mudras, as you're saying, about kind of history about it, uh, about the nervous system, about trauma in the body. So I did really enjoy this one. Haunted Bookshop by Christopher Morley, which is like a really beautiful edition. Um, and this one is actually from, it's sort of the second in a... Um, a series but it does I don't think it really matters that you haven't read the first one and it's from 1917 I think Let's see if I can find the date 1919 originally published this edition on Melville Melville House Publishing was from 2013 um, it's called The Haunted Bookshop. I went into it thinking it might be a ghost story and it's it's not. There's no ghosts in it. There's no actual haunting other than the haunting of stories. Um, it was kind of, at the beginning, I was quite charmed by it. It was sort of that charming sort of, um, a, yeah, kind of new, smart New York uh, sort of intellectual with a, quite a light touch. Um, you know, it says... I like this bit. It says, um, between ourselves, there's no such thing abstractly as a good book. A book is good only when it meets someone, only when it meets some human hunger or refutes some human error. A book that is good for me would very likely be punk for you. My pleasure is to prescribe books for such patients as drop in here and are willing to tell me their symptoms. Symptoms. And then, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other little bits. I've tagged a few bits. This is nice as well. Books contain the thoughts and dreams of men, note the men bit, um, their hopes and strivings and all their immortal parts. It's in books that most, most of us learn how splendidly worthwhile living is. I never realised the grand greatness of the human spirit, the indomitable grandeur of man's mind until I read Milton. Um, and then the kind of explanation for why it's called Haunted Bookshop. That's why I call this place the Haunted Bookshop. Haunted by the ghost of the books I haven't read. Poor uneasy spirits, they walk and walk around me. There's only one way to lay the ghost of a book and that is to read it. So those bits make it sound nice and it was, it was nice. It was also like super sexist. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then it, it's very difficult to kind of get past that. And I would say like, kind of, sexist even for this time like you know you can kind of i know that obviously it's written in 1919 it's a different time but um yeah if i was a publisher i didn't feel like it would be something i'd be super keen to reissue because of the obvious sexism in it and it's a very just a cute incredibly male um book i mean it does have a young woman in it and it does have his wife but you know yeah it, it, it was totally readable though and it was fine um i read inlands with by ellen willows with um, Jessica for Jessica's Reading Ruminations and this is a um, Swedish book Let's see who it's translated by translated by Duncan J Lewis and it's on Nordisk books and it's got this really beautiful cover and it's a book about a young woman who moves from Stockholm to this really small kind of town in the north of Sweden to be with her um, boyfriend but uh, I think he does he drive or I don't know they meet there but by the time they've actually got there they've broken up and I think everyone just assumes she'll go back to Stockholm and she decides to stay there and she kind of works in a very ordinary job, like in a kind of a shop, like a, a food store. Um, she rents a room and she's kind of a bit depressed. And um, they go to the hotel and get drunk. And that's 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 kind of the plot, really. Um, and it was... I think we both really enjoyed it. I think this one I gave four stars. You know, sometimes when I, I, I read things read it and thought um I don't think this is going to stay with me because it felt almost you know it sort of felt a bit light as well but it has actually stayed with me I read this one like before the reading rush so it's a, a few books ago but I did um really really liked it I really like sort of Scandinavian literature and the kind of style you often get in Scandinavian literature as well I don't remember having seen cold like this before I came here 
cold that sits in the skin and the hair, paints your hair white, grey with small crystals of ice. A cold that makes everything move a little more slowly and makes everything a little clearer. A cold that is visible when you know what to look for. I really like kind of cold and stuff and I like a cold that is visible when you know what to look for. Um, yeah, so I very much enjoyed it. I would definitely kind of buy some more from Nordisk Books. Um, yeah. And then the last book to talk about is We Are The Luckiest, The Surprising Magic of a Sober Life by Laura McCowan. This has got a really nice kind of uh, naked hardback. So it's a book um, about her addiction to alcohol and then her recovery. And I guess it's a book that sort of shows the stop and start of recovery because um, she talks about how it's kind of took us a, took her like about a, I think it's like a year maybe to actually become sober and that she'd, you know, be sober for a portion of time and then kind of um, drink again. I, um, I enjoy a uh, book about addiction and I've read quite a lot of them but I feel like now I like after I've read quite a few I'm much more interested in the recovery side of it than the stories about being um, drunk or high um, and this one was a bit more kind of focusing on recovery which I did really appreciate um, it's really well written it's got quotes um, by Danny Shapiro I think Danny Shapiro might have been her tutor Elena Brower, Melissa Fairboss and Glennon Doyle um and yeah i i did I, I thought it was really um it was really open i really liked the right it was like a good memoir as well we like the writing style she's also a yoga teacher so i felt like there was like a um a connection as well um i'm just yeah just how you can carry on after talking a lot about how alcohol is something that obviously if you've done it so much for drunk some for so many years how difficult it is to give up um in that kind of addiction way but also in that way that your brain is kind of automatic because you've kind of um created this routine i guess your brain automatically will know that alcohol will make you feel relaxed or make you feel a certain way and it's very difficult to kind of re you have to like rewire your brain um so that was interesting as well which is kind of like the sanskaras in yoga if you kind of know anything about them which are, they talk about them as being like these grooves in your brain like almost like grooves on a record player that your habits have, have made these grooves and how hard it is then to get out of them i really liked it if you know of any kind of um good sober books or good books that um deal with addiction and a kind of a recovery as well um i'd be really interested to know your recommendations that is all the books i'm going to talk about today um yeah hope you have a good day hope you're doing okay um and Stay safe and look after yourselves.